violence against segregation in the mid 1950s, 50, 50s, and is the and is best known for his 1963 "I Have a Dream" speech. The third Monday of January is a U.S. federal holiday to commemorate his birthday. Quick fact, started college at 15, Nobel Peace Prize winner, assassinated in 1968. Letter from a Birmingham jail, March on Washington. I have a dream that my four, four children uh, one day live in a nation where they would not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character, Martin Luther King Jr. Praise the Lord. That's a blessing. Thank you, Miss, little Miss Jackson. We thank you for that. We thank you for that. We, we don't want to never forget that. That was, a, that, was, that was a movement that we would never forget. And all the generation coming up, that generation and generation, to learn about it. Remember, that was so powerful. I want to thank Miss James for the announcement. We, we hear the announcement. Let's govern ourselves accordingly and uh, keep the announcements in mind. And I hope that we can attend it, uh, you know, keep it in mind. Because we're going to buy it. And the next thing is an insp inspirational, insp inspirational selection from the William Summers. Summers. Thank you all.
see. Hey, let me hear you say I am blessed. I am blessed. Let me hear you say I am blessed. I am blessed. Let me hear you say I am blessed. I am blessed. Let me hear you say I am blessed. I am blessed. Let me hear you say hallelujah. 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 Let me hear you say thank you, Jesus. 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 Who gave you food and clothes? Thank you, Jesus. I call you in your right mind. Thank you, Jesus. Gave you eyes to see. Thank you, Jesus. Gave you your feet to walk. Thank you, Jesus. Gave you your mind to think. Thank you, Jesus. Gave you your tongue to talk. Thank you, Jesus. Who gave you your eyes to see. Thank you, Jesus. Gave you your feet to walk. Thank you, Jesus. Gave you your mind to think. Thank you, Jesus. Gave you your tongue to talk. Thank you, Jesus. Gave you the hand.
Hallelujah. Say, tell the world, I am blessed. Do you feel like you're blessed today? Do you feel like the Lord's been good to you? Do you feel like the Lord has brought you a mighty long way? Why don't you put your hands together? Why don't you just give God your best praise? Why don't you just tell the Lord how much you love him? Why don't you tell the Lord you have blessed my soul? Lord, you are good to me. Lord, you've been great to me. I am blessed. I am blessed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. He is an awesome God. He is a provider. He is my shelter in the time of a storm. He is my bridge over troubled water. Amen. When all my enemies are against me, when they come at me like a flood, my God will deliver me. My God will lift me up. He will lift me up to a standard. Woo! Yeah. He is worthy. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What an awesome God we serve. It's just something about the Lord. When I think about the goodness of God, when I think about where the Lord had brought me from, when I was down on my sick bed, the Lord picked me up. When I was down and out, had nowhere to turn, had no child, but the Lord provided for me. When I didn't know where my money was going to come from, when my money looked funny, the Lord, he provided. He is my God. He is a blesser today. Yeah. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there? Have you ever been down? Have you ever been down? And the Lord picked you up? You ought to be able to give him a praise up in here. You ought to be able to lift him up in here. The atmosphere is just right, just for you to give God a praise when your children run amok, when your children won't behave. But the Lord turned them around. But the Lord, he brought them out. He's worthy. I am blessed. You don't know what the Lord done for me. You don't know. Let me tell it. Cause the Lord been good. The Lord been good. Yeah. Somebody had to be grateful. Somebody had to be thankful. What the Lord have done for you. What the Lord have brought you from. Woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited already. Yes, yes, yes. Mmm. Lord been good. Lord been good. Yes, he have. Sometimes words just can't describe how good the Lord been. Sometimes we just can't say it. Sometimes we just got to express it. Sometimes we just got to lift up our hand and just say, Lord, I thank you. Sometimes we just got to submit to the Spirit of God and allow the Holy Ghost to have his way. Sometimes we just got to yield and give the right away to the Holy Ghost. He is my comforter. Yes, 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 yes. I, I'm ready to take my seat right now. Yes, yes. Even in a time like this, we can say, Lord, we love you. Even in a time like this, we can say, Lord, we lift you up. With corona all around us, sickness and disease, 
family members falling by the wayside, but I still can lift up holy hands and say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I praise you. Oh, Lord, I thank you because you've been mighty good. You've been mighty, mighty, mighty good. Oh, what a wonder he is. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. 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 Y'all done did something to me. Done got me stirred up, church. Hallelujah. You done got me stirred up. Down on the inside. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. There's nothing wrong with getting stirred up, church. There's nothing wrong with praising God while you're going through. There's nothing wrong praising God while you're sick. Don't know where you're going to get well or not. There's nothing wrong with praising God. He said in all things, give thanks. In all things, no matter what you're going through, no matter what's happening in your life, you give thanks to the Lord because God have a plan for you. God have a way out for you. And you ought to lift him up. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank God for the presence of the Holy Spirit. Thank God for what he's doing here in this place at this time. Lord, we thank you. Yes, Lord. We do give praise. We do thank you, God. We lift you up today. For you are worthy to be praised. Yes, yes. We do thank God for the William and Summers. Amen. Who's singing and amen so beautifully. And singing with the anointing this morning. We thank God for you. We thank God for the deacons. The deaconess, the ushers, the mothers. All those in the household of faith. We thank God for all of you. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God for my wife, Lady Freshwater. Amen. Thank God. God been good to us down through the years. And I give it all to him. Hallelujah. If it wasn't for the Lord on my side, where would I be? We all can say that. If it wasn't for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Truly, we thank God. I'm not going to try to be too long. Amen. We're going to do what the Lord would have us to do. And move out the way. Our scripture today will come from 1 Timothy, 2nd chapter, 1st verse. 1 Timothy, 2nd chapter. We will begin at the first verse. Are we there yet? Amen. Amen. That sounds like about four voices. No, it's more than four people in here. Amen. Amen. So get your iPhone out, your Galaxy out, your tablet, or whatever you might have, your Bible. Amen. Let's go to First Timothy, the second chapter. If you're not dead and down, well, I want you to stand anyway. And you can look on the big screen, and you can read off the big screen. Oh, God is good. God is good. Amen. God have made a way. Amen. Amen. We, we thank God for our new sound system is updated. Amen. Amen. And it sounds good. Amen. Hallelujah. Second Timothy, second chapter, first verse. I exhort therefore that first of all supplication, prayers, intercessions, and giving a thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness 
and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. That note reading again. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Jesus. Six verse say, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Amen. Amen. Let us pray, gracious Father. We come now, God. Oh God, seeking, oh God, for your guidance and your direction in this lesson today. Oh God, that I may speak a word to your people. Oh God, not me, but ye, you that live on the inside. Oh, God, I ask for a fresh anointing. Oh, God, guide me and lead me and anoint me for the preaching of this word. Then, God, bless your people. God, give them a heart to receive your word. Oh, God, give them ears to hear. Oh, God, that your word may fall on good soil, that it may bring forth more fruit. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Amen, amen. That first verse says, I exhort therefore that first of all supplication, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Amen. In other words, he's telling us that we ought to pray for everyone. Amen. Amen. We must pray. So I would like to use for a thought or subject. I know what prayer can do. Amen. We got to understand, amen, through this lesson here, this letter that Paul uh, wrote to Timothy. Amen. Timothy was Paul's son in the ministry. And God and, and Paul was giving him instruction, amen, on, on how, amen, that he ought to lead the people and how the people should behave, how they should carry themselves, how they should conduct themselves, amen. This word also, amen, letting us know that we as children of God, amen, is also giving us instruction on how to worship and to praise God, amen. We understand here, we see in this thing third verse it says for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior in other words we is good and pleasing to God when we pray for all men amen and then Paul goes so far to say to, to, so far to say here not only do we pray for all men but we pray for those that's in authority Amen. He began to say, pray for kings and for all that are in authority. Amen. I know some of you didn't vote for. Amen. And I know some of you don't like uh, Donald Trump. Amen. Because he was our president. He was in authority. He was the president of this nation. Amen. You might not want it to. And some of you might have not uh, prayed for Donald Trump when he was president. But you know what? We as children of God, we should have been praying for Donald Trump. Amen. I'm so glad that Paul is teaching us that we are to love everybody. We are to pray for everybody. We are to be concerned for the people of the world. Amen. We got to understand that Paul said in this letter to Timothy, I exhort. Amen. In other words, other words, he said, therefore, I strongly encourage you to do these things. That's what Paul is saying. I'm encouraging you you, to pray for your leaders, pray for those in authority, or pray for all those, amen, that walk upon the land, amen. We got to understand that uh, uh, Paul was saying that we must make supplication. In other words, we must take action, we must ask, amen. We must make requests to God for those that's in authority. Amen. Because we are human. We are. We will come up short. We will fail. We will not dot every I. We will not cross every T. So that's why we must pray one for another. Amen. I, I your pastor. Amen. I make some mistakes. Amen. Amen. But I'm not going out here and shoot nobody, murder nobody. Amen. But I still make mistakes. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we look at mistakes. Amen. We got some big eyes and some little you amen some small sins and some big sins but I come to tell you we got to pray one for another amen all beings regardless what they're going through it doesn't matter whether they're strong it doesn't matter whether they're healthy it doesn't matter whether they're 
rich or poor they are going through so we must pray for one another amen someone sometimes we look at people and they look like they're doing good and everything is fine they got everything taken care of look like they have money they're wearing nice clothes driving nice cars they look like their home is beautiful amen look like you might walk in and not find a speck of dust nowhere in the home but I guarantee you they're going through something we got to understand, amen, that God wants us to pray always. We must pray for one another. And you know what? Prayer can change things, amen, because I know what prayer can do, amen. I don't know about you, but maybe somewhere down the line in your past, amen, you have dealt with some stuff and done some stuff that you're not proud of. I can say it myself. I can talk about me. I can't talk about you, Deacon, but I can talk about me. I have done some stuff I'm not proud of, but you know what? Through it all, somebody prayed for me. I know what prayer can do. There were folks that didn't like me, that didn't get along with me because of my attitude and my action, but you know what? Somebody was praying for me, and do you know because somebody prayed for me, uh, God touched my heart, and, and God turned me around. Uh, I don't know about you, but today, but God wanted to touch somebody's heart today. Uh, God wanted to change somebody today. God wants somebody to look at their lives. God wants you to examine yourself and wants you to look at yourself. Some of you just need to get to a mirror and just look at yourself and ask God to show you more of yourself. See, some of us are walking around in denial. We can't see ourselves. There's a song we sing sometimes too close to the mirror. I want you to know sometimes you just got to back up and get a good look at yourself. You got to say, honey, I don't have it all together. Honey, you don't look all that good. What do you mean you don't look all that good? Because there's something down on the inside of where men and women cannot see. But God looked down at the heart and God said something wrong with your heart. You need surgery. You need an operation on your heart. You need to change. You need to change the way you're going. You need to make a difference in the world. I don't know about you, but God told me today, he said prayer, a real change thing, but we got to hang in there. We got to hold on, and we got to wait on the Lord. I'm so glad that prayer, it will change things. We must make supplication. We must I pray for our brothers and sisters uh, even though uh, uh, some done walked away uh, uh, some done turned their back on us uh, but we got to pray uh, for the lost souls uh, we got to pray uh, for those uh, that done gone down the road uh, we got to pray for those uh, and said I don't want to be part of this no more uh, we got to pray for them uh, why? because God uh, he said I want every man uh, I wish that every man uh, to be saved uh, in order for them to get saved uh, in order for you to be delivered uh, uh, somebody got to pray for you uh, I'm about ready to come on home uh, I'm not going to give you all of that uh, but listen here uh, I'm reminded uh, in the story uh, in the book of Jeremiah uh, the word tell me uh, that God people uh, God's children of Israel uh, they was in captivity uh, the Bible tell me that the Babylonians had taken God's people and taken them out of, of the promised land. But look at God. The Bible tell me that God sent the prophet uh, Jeremiah. He said, go tell the captivity of my people. Good God Almighty, even though you've been defeated, even though you've been beat it down, even though you've been a stranger I want you to tell my people, uh, don't give up hope uh, and don't let go. Jeremiah told uh, the children of Israel uh, why they was in Babylon. Jeremiah told them, uh, so the Lord said, is this what I want you to do? I want you to plant a vineyard. I want you to make garden. I want you to build 
your houses. I want you to find wives for your sons, find husbands for your daughters. Be fruitful and multiply in this strange land. Some of us right now might be in a strange place. Some of us might not understand why I'm going through this here. Why this is happening to me. But the Lord said, hold up your head. Lift it up high. Because I, the Lord thy God, I haven't forgot all about you. I know all your struggles. I know your trials. I know your temptations. But the Lord said, I am a still God. I will. I will. A turn it around for you. Jeremiah told him that the Lord said, after the seventh year have passed, the Lord said, I will revisit your captivity. I don't know about you, but God is a deliverer. I don't know about you. Sometimes we'll get rid and well done. But the Lord said, hold on and hold and God will uh, deliver you. The word tells me that God's people, he said, uh, not only do you just live here in this strange place, in this strange land, but I want you to pray for this nation. Pray for this king. He might not be my king. He might not be my chosen one, but he said, Pray. He said, pray. The Lord said, and I, I will come and deliver you. I don't know about you, but when I think about the Lord and all he done, I get joy down in my soul. Do I have anybody that can say the Lord I've been good to you? Do I have anybody? We got of your struggle, regardless of your trial, regardless if everybody walked away, you can still lift up hands and say the Lord, he been good, he been good, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's been mighty good. I don't know about you today, but I woke up early this morning with the Lord on my mind, with the Lord in my heart. He is, he is a blessing me right now, right now, right now. Do you feel alright? Do you feel alright? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he, won't he do it? I know what prayer can do. Prayer changes things. Prayer will heal your body. Prayer will deliver you. Prayer we're turning it around. Regardless of what you're going through, you must pray. The Bible tell me that the city of Nineveh, God was going to destroy, but the word said they got down in sackcloth and ashes, and they prayed to God, and God saved the city. I don't know about you, but Holy Trinity, the Lord, the Turn it around. He's already doing it. He's already doing it. He's already doing it. Can you reach down on the inside and say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I know. I know what prayer can do. I know what prayer can do. I don't need T.D. Jakes. Come tell me what prayer can do. 
I don't need, need Benny Hinn to come tell me what prayer can do. I know for myself what prayer can do. I know prayer. I know prayer works. You just got to work the prayer. You got to work the prayer. You got to work the prayer. That's the message. I know what prayer can do. Let us stand. Let us stand. Let us stand. Let us stand. Prayer changes things, church. Prayer makes a difference. And the word teaches us that we all should pray. Just don't depend on someone else's prayer. But you got to pray for yourself. You got to lift God up for yourself. You got to have that relationship with God. So you feel comfortable when you come to God. The word said come to the throne boldly. So you got to get yourself feel comfortable and close enough to God that you can come to him for yourself. And you know what you need to do when you come to God? God already know everything about you. He know what you're going through. He know what you're doing, what you've done, what you're going to do. All you got to do is come to God and confess. Ooh. With your mouth. Lord, I know I did this, I did that, I said this, I said that. I've been here, I've been there. But God, I ask you to forgive me. And that's what God wants to hear. That's what God wants to hear. Don't be to the point where you're so hard-hearted, you're not willing to release that guilt. Release what you've been through, what you're going through, release it. Put it on the altar. Oh, you just, just, just let be like a book. When you open a book up, you can read what's in it. When you come to God, be like a book. Just open up to God and talk to God. And I promise you, things will change. Things will change. If there be one today that don't know the Lord, Will you come? You haven't given your life over to Christ. If you have not submitted to the will of God, will you come? If you don't have a church home, decide to join this old branch of Zion, will you come? Will you come? Will you come? You know what? Scriptures also tell us that God said I'm married to the backslider. Yes, Amen. If you have backslid, God is saying, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Will you come? You may be seated. You may be seated. If you have something you want to take to the altar, you have something you want to give to God, you don't have to come near around the altar because God can hear you and God can see you right where you are at. But I ask that you just stand and be willing to admit to yourself and to God. You know, during Jesus' time, and I think some people still do it, they go to the priest and confess to the priest. But you know what? I believe they still don't confess all to the priest. Because I know sometimes you're not willing to confess it all to yourself. 
How you gonna tell somebody else the all and you're not gonna tell yourself the all? But you know what? You can take it to God. You can take it to God. And you know what's so good about it? God not gonna go tell Deacon Dixon. He ain't gonna tell Deacon Calvin Brothers. But God gonna put his arms around you and say, I love you. I love you. And he will say, go and sin no more and send you on your way. That's the kind of God we serve. That's the kind of God we serve. Why don't you come to the throne and be bold before God and say, Lord, I have come up short. We living in a time they call it wrong right and right wrong. We living in a time can I just be real for about a half a second? We living in a time where little boys are telling mama, I don't feel like I'm a boy, I feel like I'm a girl. And mama will tell you, go ahead and be yourself. That's the kind of time we living in. Little girls telling mama, I don't feel like I'm a girl, I feel like I'm a boy. Go ahead and be yourself. But that's not God's word. That's not God's will. We got to stand up for what's right. We started this morning about justice. We started this morning about doing what's right. We started about going against the crowd. Majority of the world is saying, this is all right. But my God is saying, it's not right. So my brothers and sisters, it's prayer time. It's prayer time. We're going to lay it on the altar. We're going to give it to God. We're going to give God our heartache. We're going to give him our pain. We're going to tell him about our struggles. We're going to tell him about our trials. We're going to tell him about our highs and our lows. We're going to tell him about this feeling we have on the inside that sometimes I feel like you're not even near God. But God said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Let us pray. Let's take it to the Lord. Our Father, our God, here we are once again. God, some struggling with one thing and some struggling with another. Some feel one way and some feel another way. But God, you know what they're dealing with. You know what they're going through. And God, we come here now to put the issues and the concerns on the altar God we come now God asking that you will search our heart and God anything in our heart that's not pleasing to you God we ask that you move it far from our heart God we asking that you forgive us of any wrong we have committed any sin we have committed God, we ask your forgiveness. And God, we want to do that what is pleasing to you. I know, God, I can't be satisfied all the time. But God, I want to satisfy you all the time. This is why I'm landing on the altar, God. Because I want a closer walk with you. I want a closer relationship with you. I want to be that man, that woman, that child, that boy, that girl that you was looking for. I want my light to shine so you can get the glory, you get the honor, you get all the praise. And God, we come now, God, and we lay it all on the altar. Our sickness, our disease, our trials. Oh God, 
We giving it to you, God. For you the only one that can deliver us. You the only one that can save us. You the only one that can draw us now unto you. Then God, there are some that are having issues and problems on the job with conditions and situations. God, we bring it to the altar. God, our children are missing many days out of school because of COVID. Some sick, some can't go because COVID is in there. But God, we're giving it all to you. We ask God that you protect our children, keep our children. And God, when I say our children, I'm not just talking about Holy Trinity children. God, I'm talking about all the youth and children of the world. God, we ask that you bless our school system. God, the superintendent, the administrator, the teachers, custodian, bus driver, watch over them, Lord maintenance workers God watch over them God protect and keep them safe so our children can be safe then God we ask Lord that you watch over the president of this country the vice president our police officers our boys and girls that's in the armed forces God, we ask God that you keep them and protect them. Keep us all safe. Protect us all, God. Build us up, oh God. And then, God, we ask that you bless us here at Holy Trinity. God, you already bless us. You're still blessing us. But, God, we come to give it all to you. And, God, we ask that you will send the increase physically, spiritually, and financially, oh God. We come into you, God. For you said one plant, one water, but you send the increase. God, we gonna plant, we gonna water, but God, you got to send the increase. It's in your hands. It's in your hands, God. And we trust you, God. We believe you, God. And you working it out. And we give it all to thee. This in thy son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I know what prayer can do. Prayer changes things, church. We can look around. We can see what the Lord have done. He brought us a mighty long way. Two years of COVID-19, but look at what the Lord has done. It's because of God. And I want to take a moment and thank God and dedicate what God has done here for us. Our sound system is in. Sounds good. And we thank God for it. It's all because God. And what's so good about it, church? We don't owe a dime or any of it. God is good. That's because of you. That's because of you. And God going to continue to bless us. And we will grow. There's so many that have grown spiritually. See, the church, if the church not growing physically and growing spiritually, the church is still growing. But God going to take care of that. That's in God's hand. We got to do our part. We have to do our part. And we're going to trust God that he would do his. But I just want to say right now at this time of uh, prayer, Thanking God, God, we thank you for this equipment that you have blessed us for. And God, I ask God that it be dedicated unto you. Oh God, that it will continue to be used to glorify you. 
And God, we know all of this equipment, it just don't bless us here in the Holy Trinity. But God, there's people that's looking at it on Facebook. Oh God, they're online listening and looking. And God, we ask that this word, that this message will continue to reach out and touch all those that will hear, all those that will see, that it will be a blessing to them and they will give you glory they will give you praise. They will give you thanks for what you're doing. We come now, God. We consecrate and we dedicate this, these instruments, these mics, this box, this sound system, in your name, in Jesus Christ's name. We dedicate and we consecrate it in Jesus' name. And the church say amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. It's offering time. It's offering time. It's offering time. If you had not chance to give your offering, just hold it up nice and high. Usher a trustee, someone will come by, and they will receive it. Hold it up nice and high. Thank each and every one that gave. Let's stand, please. We'd like to thank each and every one that gave in this offering. Lord, we're going to let this, let, let this money be used to uplift your kingdom, Lord. Continue to bless your church and then go up higher and higher. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. burn when the man of God was preaching. Bishop was preaching the word. Amen. Prayer will change things. All we got to do is keep our hand in God's hand. You can make it. You try. Just don't give up. God is where things look. How dark it get. How cloudy it get. The sun will shine again. If you just hold on and keep on in Jesus' name. You can make it if you try. You can make it. I just want to thank you. I enjoy that word. Enjoy the women of the Enjoy the musicians. Enjoy y'all. Thank y'all for this opportunity. Thank the Lord for this opportunity to stand here one more time behind this pulpit. He's good. God is good. Let us stand, please. We getting ready to go home now. The bishop always said, give yourselves a hug. Give yourselves a hug and let, and let him know. And let he let you know he loves you. <laughs> and we love you. And say amen. 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 Y'all be blessed and have a blessed week. Don't forget Bible study.
Anniversary Williams Ensemble. Today would have been our anniversary. But the Lord said the same. We look forward to next year.